Are you a brand new or an aspiring interpreter that is wondering about the names of medications? If so, stick around because this video is just for you. So first drinks first, thank you guys so much. And I just erased my thank you, you can almost see it, but I accidentally pressed the button. But you can see that it says thank you here and then it says 100 likes, I'm sorry for that. But I accidentally pressed this button. I know, I'm dumb. <laughs> All right, but anyways, yes, we finally did it guys. I am very, very excited to let you guys know that we finally got to 100 likes to the prepare for the CCHI video, so yeah! This is the moment we've all, went, we've all been waiting for. MIP21 is now officially posted on YouTube, so woo! Time to celebrate, right guys? Thank you Fabiola, thank you Walter, Carlos, Melissa, Erica, everyone that pushed this video, everyone that I forgot to mention, all of those unsung heroes, you know who you are, if you, um, gave us a like or if you had someone else get us that like well you're our hero and we thank you and we finally did it guys so remember this is not the end this is just the beginning right we have MIP 21 posted on YouTube now it's your chance to comment for a chance to win exclusive links to MIP 22 and a chance to send us your interpretation to MIP 22, that way we can go ahead and provide you some feedback. So, ooh, what else, what else can you ask for, right? 100 likes to the prepare for the CCHI video, MIP 21 on YouTube, and a chance to win feedback from us and exclusive links to MIP 22, right? So, happy Thursday, guys. And I forgot to open my great so i'm sorry but i already know it let's see if i know it i'm gonna say by heart so hello and welcome to unwind sessions where right after my shift i give the highlights of my workday and answer any questions that might have been asked at a previous session my name is juan i am an english spanish medical video remote interpreter with over four years of experience and what else do i say oh <laughs> <laughs> this really sucks. <laughs> so today is Thursday, August 26, 2021. And today I took a total of... I took a total of 25 sessions. Always a mix between audio and video sessions. But today, surprisingly, for the past two, three days now, I've been getting a lot of audio sessions, which... I love, of course, I would rather, well, it depends on the circumstances, but I will most likely, if you give me, if you give me a preference between choosing between an audio session or a video session, I'm pretty sure, depending on context, but most of the time, audio sessions are gonna win. I had a video session which was more than an hour long. There we go, I have my script. I don't know if I missed something, but anyways, um, what was I talking about? Oh, uh, the audio sessions, right? Uh, I don't know why today I had uh, so much uh, audio sessions. I've been having so many audio sessions. Like I told you, there's a rumor going around that the company that I work for is going to be hiring only OPI. So maybe that's it. And then they're going to take all the OPI away from us. <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen, man. I I don't know. If I were um, VRI all the time, I don't know if I would like really make it I'll probably quit <laughs> it's tough guys not to discourage you but it's tough the pay is good so I'm still here um, <laughs> so I had an odd uh, video session that was a little bit over an hour and a half long but I was just mostly waiting for doctors and nurses they were coming in and out of the room so they'll be like oh you gotta wait for the next person and then I was like oh of course I'll wait and uh, they had me wait for like three, four nurses. Then the doctor came in at the end. So it was uh, like an hour and a half long. The rest of the sessions were not that uh, long. 
uh, however I do have some highlights for today two highlights today uh, the first highlight of the day is that with that session where I was there for about an hour uh, what happened in that session is that uh, there was a drill like they had a drill over um, I don't know what it was for an emergency and then they said all oh, attention reporting to all the hospital staff we have a code we have a drill we have a code red this is a drill and then of course I was waiting for a nurse and then I told the lady I told her um, I'm sorry ma'am this is your interpreter speaking but they said that that was a drill I don't know if you want to see if that was for you as well or just for the personnel then she went to go see and it turns out it was just for uh, a certain personnel right there in the hospital right for certain staff and they didn't have to go on the drill but um, for drill the correct word for drill is simulacro and I didn't say that it completely just left my mind and I what I said is entrenamiento which drill is also an entrenamiento but like a fire drill is simulacro and um, football drill is, is entrenamiento so uh, drill can be used for both things but what I said was kind of okay like but I didn't like it I felt bad I felt like a bad interpreter uh, but that's what came into my mind and then I tried looking for it in Lingui real quick but then it had like a big old list of things and I couldn't find it in time and the first thing that came to mind was entrenamientos that's the one and uh, so yeah uh, that was it um, for my hiccup today and I, there's another thing that I want to mention this has nothing to do with interpreting this is just one of those weird weird or random things that happen while you're interpreting but all of a sudden the doctor walks in and uh, the patient is in there the patient was wearing glasses and then the nurse had just left she had her pair of glasses too as well and then uh, the doctor w had to read something in the patient's chart and then she turns to the gentleman and then she says you know what I have to go to my office because I forgot my reading glasses and then the gentleman turns to her and takes off his glasses and hands them to them and then he tells them uh, here there are reading glasses as well and then the doctor takes them and then she puts them on and then she starts reading and then all of a sudden the nurse walks in and then uh the nurse is like uh surprised and she's like what are why are you wearing glasses and she's like oh it's just that i forgot my glasses my reading glasses at the office and the gentleman's letting me use them and then she said oh i got reading glasses too you can give them back and then she took off her glasses and then she gave them to the doctor the doctor gave the glasses back to the gentleman and then she put her reading class glasses on and they were able to get to the session like that like that just blew my mind honestly I was like what's going on here COVID is completely gone people are sharing their glasses and oh I meant I said the unmentional in word please know why you report it um but that's not the point right I didn't know that you could share reading glasses like so easily like here we'll do the uh reading glasses exchange that just caught me by surprise um I don't know that just seemed very very weird to me I don't know if that's a thing if anyone can let me know that's a thing because I had never seen that before in my life I mean I don't use reading glasses right I use glasses far away but I got contacts so I mean I've never I've never been like oh I, um, I forgot my glasses can I borrow yours or no one has but I guess for seeing far away is different I wouldn't know but anyways if anyone can tell me if borrowing other person's reading glasses is a thing please I'll be very 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 thankful all right so now that is going to be it let's get to the main course of the evening right thank you Avad Peña for your great idea and uh, I think I'm gonna be doing this as a series for 300 most prescribed medications in the US because I was only gonna do like 30 
But, and then I said, no, they need more. And then I was gonna do 50. But then I look at, at the whole 300 list and I was like, I've had to interpret all of these medications. So it's going to be the 300 most prescribed medications in the US. So this is going to be part one. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I'll probably just do one today, one tomorrow, and then I'll just keep on doing one every Wednesday or every Monday to, I don't know. I'll just do it like that once a week because it's going to be 300. So you guys are going to get it. All right. And uh, yeah, I uh, I do have to tell you one thing, though. Uh, medications are those things that um, people don't even know the name of their medication. So if you go ahead and interpret to the Spanish name, if it sounds very similar, they'll know what it is. But if it sounds different, they you're gonna run into trouble and most of the of the medication sounds the same so if you know the name of the medication and you know that in spanish it sounds the name if you pronounce it um uh with an english with with a Sp the english name with a spanish pronunciation you'll be okay for the most part because most of the time these patients have not ever seen the spanish translation for this medication so they only know the english name all right uh use that tip carefully though and make sure that you do know the name the interpretation of the medication before doing that because if it's something completely different and you say something that is similar because you think that's it uh you're gonna look like a fool so keep that in mind and you can get away with uh the english name but um, just make sure that it, it is the like similar or if the patient is just using the English name, you can get away with using the English name as well. Uh -huh. Just wanted to mention that. So now let's get started. The following definitions were obtained from clinichalk.com, nhs.uk, rxlist.com, medlineplus.com gov and uh, I have a list for 10 but I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna get through the 10 I still I still have the 10 written down right here I am hopeful but I know it's not gonna happen this is just too much information so let's see how many we can get through I think I'm gonna be stopping around uh, 25 minutes and that's all that I have time for today I oh, I forgot to tell you guys I am over my shift I, I was over my shift for like one hour so um, that's why this video is so late I've been having I've been staying after work for like half an hour an hour for the past three days now uh, good money but too much work all right so let's get started right I'm just gonna get started now sorry all right so for number one at Torvastatin and in Spanish, Atorvastatina. And here are the brand names, okay? This is gonna be English, Spanish, brand name. Brand name is Lipitor. And uh, what is this? Atorvastatin belongs to a group of medicines called statins. It is used to lower cholesterol. If you've been diagnosed with high cholesterol, it's also taken to prevent heart disease, including heart attacks and strokes. Your doctor may prescribe atorvastatin. If you have a family history of heart disease or a long-term health condition, such as type 1 or type 2 diabetes or rheumatoid arthritis, this medicine is available on prescription only. It comes as tablets, including chewable tablets, for people who have difficulty swallowing. So statin, for the most part, statins are medications to lower cholesterol. There's a lot of them and no wonder this is one of the most prescribed drugs in the US because the number one leading cause of death in the world is coronary um, artery disease. Is that how you say it? Coronary artery coronary artery disease hmm. I'm pretty sure that's it or it's, well there's problems with the coronary artery or a coronary arteries there's blocked coronary arteries that's the number one cause of death 
in the world. But I don't know if it's coronary artery disease. <laughs> you think, uh, but it's, and it's not something that you see every day. Um, you think I would have more uh, sessions about that, but I really don't. Um, for coronary heart disease. Coronary artery heart disease. Coronary heart disease, I think it is. Uh, and coronary artery disease, well, who cares, right? Um, but anyways, um, you know what that is? Coronary artery heart, coronary heart disease. Uh, that just bothers me so much. You have no idea how much my brain is bothering me right now. And I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I never do this, but I'm gonna look that up. Coronary heart disease, yeah, all right. So, sorry about that, guys. Um, I guess the 100 likes has really gotten to me. <laughs> All right, so let's get to number two. Number two is levothyroxine, and in Spanish is levotiroxina, and the brand name is Synthroid. Now, levothyroxine is a medicine used to treat an underactive thyroid gland, hypo thyroidism the thyroid gland makes thyroid hormone which helps to control energy levels and growth levothyroxine is taken to replace the missing thyroid hormone levothyroxine is only available on prescription it comes as tablets or as a liquid that you drink so levothyroxine is for hypothyroidism which is a underactive thyroid we have the thyroid right here if you touch right here you're gonna feel two walls those balls that's your thyroid and that is a an um a gland i forgot how to say gland and that is a gland that is responsible for a lot of hormones which i can't remember what they are at this time should have looked that up all right but just know that level thyroxine is for when your thyroid is not creating the thyroid hormone so they need to supply it and they give it to you artificially that way you can live a normal life and um, if I'm not mistaken uh, if you don't have that thyroid you could feel tired uh, you could gain weight there's a lot of things that can go wrong with that I don't know of course I don't know right off the top of my head I would have to look that up uh, so let's get to number three Number three is lisinopril. In Spanish, it's just the same. Lisinopril. Brand names is Cestril and uh, Prinville. Prinville. Lisinopril is a medicine to treat high blood pressure and heart failure. It's also prescribed after a heart attack and in diabetic kidney disease. Lisinopril helps prevent future strokes and heart attacks. It also improves your survival if you're taking it after a recent heart attack or for heart failure and it also shows uh, it also slows down diabetic kidney disease this medicine is only available on prescription comes as tablets it also comes as a liquid for people who find it hard to swallow tablets but this has to be ordered specially by your doctor lisinopril is also available combined with another blood pressure medicine called hydrochlorothiazide and you're gonna get that pair a lot lisinopril and hydrochlorothiazide okay so just like the name says this is for high blood pressure and higher heart failure and like it says uh if um they mm, the, i've heard this mentioned in some uh, medical appointments where they said oh there's a really good medication that can help you with your high blood pressure and uh, since you have kidney disease it's also good for the kidneys so if you have if you meet that criteria of those two things they will give that patient lisinopril because it helps them out for both all right and uh oh did i skip something oh okay all right this next one this is one that is very 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 extra common almost all of the patients uh, take this well all, almost all 
and that's not true <laughs> it's not almost all but this is a medication that is mentioned every day for sure um and that metformin hydrochloride in spanish is chlorhydrato de metformina the brand names are here which are glupofage and glupofage xr and uh Fortimate. And uh, funny, before I give you the definition for this, let me tell you some funny names that providers and patients have given me for this medication. Uh, one of them is Metamorphin, another one is Made For Me, and another one is Made For Men. So sometimes they don't even know the names of the medication. <laughs> And it's funny. And this morning, I just had that metaformin, metaformin, and that was a medical provider that gave that name. Uh, so let me tell you what this is. Metformin is a drug approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration as a prescription medication to treat diabetes. This medication is used to decrease hepatic liver glucose production, decrease GI glucose absorption, and increase target cell insulin sensitivity. This medication is a treatment indicated as an adjunct to diet, exercise, and lifestyle changes such as weight loss to improve glycemic blood sugar control in adults with type 2 diabetes. Many patients with type 2 diabetes will eventually need to take insulin by injection. Metformin does not cause weight gain. That sounds like, a, like an ad, huh? Uh, but anyways, metformin is for type 2 diabetes. This is like one of the most prescribed drugs for diabetes. In my opinion, well, of course, it's on the list, number four. So definitely one, number one most prescribed drug for diabetes. All right. And um, I forgot what I was going to say. But anyways, that's metformin. Remember that name because you're going to be saying that a lot metformin and uh there it you'll just say metformin not metformin hydrochloride i've never heard a provider say that so just metformin and uh in spanish metformina so that's pretty easy uh let's get to the next one um is that it oh i'm showing you the wrong one um lodipine amlodipina and the name is norvask all right the brand name so amlodipine is a medicine used to treat high blood pressure hypertension if you have high blood pressure taking amlodipine helps prevent future heart disease heart attacks and strokes amlodipine is also used to prevent chest pain caused by heart disease angina the medicine is only available on prescription it comes as tablets or as liquid to swallow so amlodipine uh, of course, it made this list. I hear it all the time as well. And this is just a medication for hypertension and very, very commonly prescribed. Should be. It's on the list, right? Uh, number six. Number six is metropolol. It's the same thing in Spanish, metropolol. And it's uh, brand names, Lopressor and Toprol XL. Metropolol belongs to a group of medicines called beta blockers. It's used to treat, you should, um, bloqueadores beta, beta blockers, remember that, because you will need to interpret that someday. It's used to treat high blood pressure, treat illnesses that cause an irregular heartbeat, prevent future heart disease, heart attacks and strokes, prevent chest pain caused by angina, prevent migraines. Metropolol can help reduce your symptoms. If you have too much thyroid hormone in your body, thyrotoxicosis you'll usually take it together with medicines to treat an overactive thyroid this medicine comes as tablets and is only available on prescription it's also given by injection but this is usually done in a hospital so this is another medication that is used also to treat high blood pressure or irregular heartbeats to prevent like the um, uh, definition said, heart attack, stroke, chest pain. So all of these things uh, can, metropolol is one of those medications that can help you with all of them. And it's a medication that is 
prescribed a lot so we are on minute 24 i think i'm gonna do albuterol and i'll probably do the next one and now it will stop there all right so we have albuterol right here in spanish it's the same and these are the brand names for it proventil hfa ventolin hfa pro air hfa and albuterol is used to prevent and treat difficulty breathing, wheezing, shortness of breath, coughing, and chest tightness caused by lung disease such as asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, a group of diseases that affects the lung and airways. Albuterol inhalation, aerosol, and powder for oral inhalation is also used to prevent breathing difficulties during exercise. Albuterol inhalation aerosol pro air HFA pro ventil FHA ventil FHA is used in adults and children four years of age and older. Albuterol powder for oral inhalation pro air respiclic. Oh, I've heard about that one. I've had to interpret that. Is used to is used in children 12 years of age and older. Albuterol solution for oral inhalation is used in adults and children two years of age and older. Albuterol is in a class of medications called bronchodilators. It works by relaxing and opening air passages to the lungs to make breathing easier. So the number one reason why they're gonna re prescribe albuterol is because the person have asthma or something with their uh, going on with their lungs, wheezing, shortness of breath, all of those things and they use it to open up the lungs and the person can be able can begin to breathe much much better uh, so that is a medication that is prescribed a lot a lot as well and this is going to be the last one today guys this is going to be omeprazole and in spanish is omeprazole without an e at the end and this is Pilosec or Pilosec over the counter, Pilosec OTC. And omeprazole reduces the amount of acid your stomach makes. It's widely used treatment for indigestion and heartburn and acid reflux. It's also taken to prevent and treat stomach ulcers. Sometimes omeprazole is taken for a rare illness ca caused by a tumor in the pancreas or gut called Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Omeprazole comes as capsules, tablets, and as a liquid that you swallow. This is made to order. All types of omeprazole are available on prescription. You can buy 10 milligrams and 20 milligrams tablets and capsules from pharmacies. So there are some omeprazole that is not prescription, like it says in the name, Proerlosec OTC. So, and this is a medication that is prescribed for a heartburn, um, for acid reflux, all that thing. Um, um, what did I say there? Uh, ulcers in the stomach. They usually have the patients take this for like two weeks to see if the uh, symptoms have stopped, two, three weeks. And then uh, they come back and then if it's good, then they stop them. Sometimes they keep them going. Sometimes they tell them that they need to take them every day uh just one pill every day and it's just to prevent uh for the most part heartburn or acid reflux all right so we i was able to make it to number eight so just i was missing two you'll definitely get those two tomorrow but that is all that i have time for and uh remember that this is going to be a 300 um, medication series so there's still so much so much to go and that's where I'm gonna leave it off today at number eight so please leave your questions in the comments and I will answer some of them on the next session remember that if anything is time sensitive uh, let me know that way I can get to it before any of the videos that I have in the queue I'll be here every Monday through Friday after work and I'm gonna do my best effort to be here even if I don't work Monday through Friday and uh, that is gonna be it guys once again oh i forgot i raised this well uh, i don't need that right once again i would like to thank you guys so much thank you everyone that helped us push the video uh 
prepare for the CCHI and helped us to get 100 likes. Thank you so much. We are very grateful for that. Remember that you still have a chance to comment on MIP21 to get those exclusive links and feedback for MIP22. Also, remember that we have a Patreon page for as little as just $1. $1 of your support. You help to motivate us to create much more content and you have access to all of the medical practice videos and everything on that page. Medical practice videos add free scripts, answer sheets, vocabulary lists, and much more content. And most importantly, you will forever win a place inside of our heart. So we love you to all of our Patreons. We love all uh, everyone that has bought us a coffee. We love all of our subscribers, and that's not looking like hard anymore. We love, I put in my face, right? <laughs> and we uh, love all of our subscribers, and we love you that is watching the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for much more content in you if you haven't done so. And don't forget to share. Happy interpreting. Goodbye. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button. Also, share this video with other beginner interpreters or anyone who can benefit from this information. Thank you all so much for all the support you guys have given us. This means the world to us. Don't forget, we also have social media. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. We also have an Instagram and the one I love the most, TikTok. We just recently got a buying a coffee and also, if you guys didn't already know, we do have a Patreon account. If you guys would like to support us a little more, we'd love to have you guys over there. And as always, I will be posting all the links to these pages down below in the description box. Thanks for watching!